is Dr. Suraya Abdul Rashid, and today I will be bringing you through the topic of advanced materials focusing on composites and nanocomposites. Composites are a class of materials composed of at least two types of different materials which when combined give rise to improved properties otherwise not achieved by the respective constituents. There are many types of composites and virtually any combination of ceramics, metals and polymers are possible. Composites have many applications, for example in construction, in aerospace, um, automotive sector, in sports and other industries. Composites can be classified according to the matrix material and examples are Ceramic matrix composites or CMCs, metal matrix composites or MMCs, and polymer matrix composites or PMCs. And the properties of these composites um, are, for example, to improve fracture toughness, to improve strength to weight, to improve creep resistance, or to increase stiffness. Composites can also be classified according to the reinforcement geometry. For example, you could have fibers as the dispersed phase, or particles, or even um, structured layers. Now, there is a new class of advanced materials known as nanocomposites. Nanocomposites are materials whereby nanomaterials are included as reinforcement to the matrix. And this video will focus on a special type of fiber reinforced polymer matrix composite. The composite is a polypropylene matrix reinforced with carbon fiber coated with carbon nanotubes. Before that, Let's define nanomaterials and fiber reinforced polymer matrix composite. Nanomaterials are a class of materials which have certain morphological dimensions in the nanoscale. They are very, very small and they can be classified as um, two dimensional structures, for example, graphene, uh, one dimensional structures like carbon nanotubes and even zero-dimensional structures such as carbon dots. Now consider graphene having a lateral dimension of several microns. So say these dimensions uh, are several microns. However, its thickness is only a few nanometers thick. This means that it has very high aspect ratio and so is considered a two-dimensional structure. Now let's consider carbon nanotubes. So consider carbon nanotubes with a length of several microns. However, it has diameter of a few tens of nanometers. So this means that it has a very high aspect ratio and is therefore considered a one-dimensional structure. And meanwhile, carbon nanotubes are so tiny, um, typically less than 10 nanometers uh, in size, and they are classified as zero-dimensional structures. Fiber-reinforced composites are composites where the reinforcing materials have fiber-like structures. In fiber-reinforced polymer composites, the fibers are stiffer compared to the matrix. Therefore, any load can transfer from the polymer to the fiber, minimizing strain. Okay, This is a region where you have the fiber in the uh, polymer matrix and this region the, it's, will strain less. Uh, on the other hand, a polymer matrix with no reinforcement such as this region here will strain more, causing it to easily weaken and break. When a load is applied, the behavior of the PMC also depends on the properties of the fiber, how strong it is, as well as the interfacial shear strength or the interaction 
uh, near the interface interface of the fiber and the uh, polymer. Now, carbon fibers are known to be very strong fibers with high tensile strength. However, they are inherently smooth and therefore the interfacial shear strength of carbon fibers in PMC is low. This means that if there is no treatment, um, the uh, bonding between the polymer and the fiber surface will be weak. The focus of the rest of this video is how carbon nanotube coatings are grown on carbon fibers in order to improve the interfacial shear strength of the fiber reinforcement. And C and T coated carbon fibers are referred to as hierarchical fibers. CNT coating is grown on the surface of carbon fibers using the method of chemical vapor deposition or CVD. In this process, carbon fibers are placed inside the reactor and are exposed to a gaseous mixture containing the catalyst precursor and the carbon precursor which is carried into the reactor via a carrier gas. And the process occurs at a temperature between 700 to 900 degrees Celsius because this is the temperature where carbon nanotubes prefer to grow and the length of time of the reaction also needs to be considered. The role of a chemical engineer, for example, would be to determine the optimum parameters that would yield CNT coated carbon fibers which would have improved interfacial shear strength in the polymer matrix. Different reaction temperature yields different carbon nanotube coatings. As you can see here, both 700 and 800 uh, degrees yields carbon nanotube coatings with good coverage, but it is always desirable to perform the process at the lowest energy required as possible. And if you can see from these images, the coatings are evaluated using scanning electron microscopy images. Different carrier flow rates also Carry gas flow rates also affects the morphology of the CNT coating as you can see here and um, we prefer to carry out the reaction at lowest uh, flow rate as possible. The length of reaction is also important and in an optimum length of time would yield carbon nanotube coatings with good coverage on individual carbon fibers. However, if we allow the process to continue for an extended length of time, and in this case, for example, 45 minutes, um, this is not desirable because bundles of fibers would be coated and this would affect the effectiveness of fiber polymer interaction in the composite. In order to view individual carbon nanotubes, a transmission electron microscope is used and which is shown in these images. And the images provide insight into the growth mechanism of the carbon nanotube coating and information on the size distribution of carbon nanotubes can also be extracted. Interfacial shear strength tests of CNT coated carbon fibers, also referred to as hierarchical fibers, remember, show that up to 380% improvement in IFSS can be achieved compared to the neat carbon fiber. This indicates that the CNT coating is effective at improving IFSS. The tensile strength test shows up to 36% improvement in tensile strength and 110% improvement in tensile modulus for the hierarchical fiber polypropylene nanocomposite compared to the neat carbon fiber uh, polypropylene composite. This is a very 
um, significant amount of improvement to the strength of the composite. So, carbon nanotube coating adds value to commercial carbon fiber and glass fiber. Both of these fibers have shown to be able to withstand the relatively high temperature of CNT coating process. The CVD process shown earlier was to treat discontinuous short fibers. But the, but the technology can be adapted to develop a continuous process which would enable the treatment of spools of um, carbon or glass fibers as you can see in this image okay oh sorry so you can see here spools of fibers are being treated okay in a continuous process Such a technology would enable the production of nanocomposite structures like CNG tags, for example, using the conventional filament winding technology. And conventional fiberglass tanks, boats, um, various equipments would benefit from using CNT coated fibers, which would produce structures that are strong yet lightweight because less material is needed to provide the same strength for example and lightweight composite components are desirable for so many other types of structures that require lightness without compromising strength such as automotive components sports gear and even electronic devices so as a conclusion Composite materials are in fact all around us and scientists are constantly developing advanced composites and nanocomposites which can lead to better application performance. Thank you for watching. Bye!